Is Final Fantasy XIV still worth playing in 2023? <laughs> yeah. Alright, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Okay, seriously, after some skeptical videos in the last couple of weeks, it is time to talk about Final Fantasy XIV from another point of view, and why we're still playing and loving it in 2023. And most of all, if it's still worth to start your own adventure. The first big positive of this game is something that is really hard to keep fresh, because it totally leaves the trails of the MMO genre, but still is one of my biggest selling points for the game. And that is the first time playing experience. It's really hard to take yourself back in time and remember all the good moments you spent with things that are long gone. But if you do so for Final Fantasy, it had been the best moments of my gamer life as a long time console player and single player game enjoyer. Even though back in 2014 where I came to Eorzea for the first time, it offered way more MMO aspects forced onto the player, but more to that later. However, what really stands out in this game, not even compared to other MMORPGs on the market, but basically all single player games as well, is how much this world makes sense to itself and the developers created a universe that drags you in with every new character you meet or places you travel to. It is insanely immersive and the love to details, references to the franchise or writing of the story's plot are in a class of its own. Even starting into A Realm Reborn made perfect sense for me and I absolutely enjoyed the story with classical Final Fantasy elements, especially on the antagonist side. Nonetheless, Heaven's Ward, like for many players, was that expansion and moment in time where the game developed into an absolute masterpiece. Gameplay became complex, smooth and much more entertaining and the story around Ishgard and the Dragonsong War was just beautifully written, while still having the ongoing light motif develop that leads to its conclusion in the recent Endwalker expansion. So there had always been a lot of planning to make the whole world and story fit, while still developing each expansion's topic around it. But even apart from all the story driven content, up to that point there's already so much to do in this game, so many outfits and weapons that are worth collecting, trials and raids to participate in, and even the brand new Crystalline Conflict PvP mode is already available at that point. Crafting, gathering, house building, gold saucer, it's crazy how much content this game is offering that even a player like Asmongold was totally stuck in Heaven's Ward as there is so much content to tackle already. Just when I was recently playing a good variation of single player games over the past weeks, I realized how good Final Fantasy XIV is, where a good old classic like Grandia outplayed the other new games by long shot. Even Kingdom Hearts 3, that I absolutely love for many elements, didn't come anywhere close to the shining times of old Final Fantasies, or yes, the new era with XIV. And not talking about Strangers of Paradise, that was cool but felt super repetitive and boring after a while and typical time travel nonsense of Nomura hit the game as hard as other games. On the other hand, we had the Resident Evil 4 remake. Hell, this game was great, not from the epic story or plot, but just how well it is crafted into a very atmospheric horror show that wants the player to have fun with the absolute basics of managing your resources, hitting enemies sharply and constantly making Leon look like the badass character he is. And while the whole engine and battle system has been pushed to the next gen standards, the mechanics of the game were absolutely 2005. And to be completely honest, I think this is the best remake that's available right now. And this is where Final Fantasy XIV comes into play again. This game is not trying to reinvent the wheel, but create the whole vehicle around it. The combat system is a classical World of Warcraft rebrand, with added strategical elements and the typical Japanese rotation system. But how all this is implemented and introduced in the game is absolutely classic. Yes, I still hope for an earlier access to job skills and a way how the game could be more fun on lower levels, but overall I have way more fun playing these old functioning battle mechanics than warping my main character from spot to spot to dodge my enemy attacks or start any assault. I mean, think about why Elden Ring was so popular, it took all the good battle mechanics, updated them by mixing in some open world elements and voila, game of the year. No too fancy stances, crazy skill trees or stupid parasitic designs that make the core mechanic feel dull once you unlock it. The gameplay of games like Tactics Ogre or Final Fantasy Tactics, while they seem dated from a visual perspective, they're way more fun than modern strategy games that put in real time decisions and stuff like that. The one exception that I thoroughly enjoyed and would rate as my personal game of the year for 2022 is A Plague Tale Requiem. Here, the producers and developers of the game took the horror genre to another level. And while it doesn't feature the grotesque horror of Resident Evil, the gameplay mechanics were simply amazing. The first game in which I enjoyed the stealth parts because they made sense. 
And while for me personally the story was the big selling point for the game, gameplay felt rewarding and absolutely satisfying when those atrocious medieval bastards got punished by Amicia's slingshot for the horrible things they committed to her and her family. That's how games should be designed, when the players feel rewarded for their actions and get even more when walking the extra mile. So this leads us back to Heavensward, right? Because walking the extra mile leads you into three more expansions that develop the main plot further with a heartbreaking and genius climax in Shadowbringers and perfectly crafted conclusion in Endwalker to become one, if not the best stories that any game ever created. But it still does offer all the MMO aspects, especially if you reach Endgame. But also everything the game had in stock before that because Square Enix are insanely good at keeping old content alive. And due to syncing of former content you can always go back in time with your high level character to relive the moments that other players felt when they played the game two expansions ago. Except for some balancing changes maybe. I mean for example if you don't care about the recent Mandeville relic weapons you can just leave Eureka a visit, gather up some friends and try to venture as far as you can into the riddles and mysteries of that very special isle. Or you could join the Bosjan Southern Front for further development of the war against Garlemald and how the whole scheming and planning took place besides the big events of Shadowbringers or Endwalker. There's just so much content that this game is offering and only the veteran players and those that played it patch after patch will run into content drought. If you're a new player or haven't explored all these old forms of content, this game is a freaking must play in my opinion. Especially if you liked any of the main series Final Fantasies that are on par with the quality of 14 or even beaten by it. I mean you can even treat it like a single player game with each patch more and more because Square Enix is constantly adding party support to dungeons and trials so that you're not dependent on other players to join your efforts and story progression. All that while I absolutely would say that the community driven forms of content are at least on the same level as they are on WoW. Guild Wars and even Elder Scrolls because of how creative our community is and how much they connect to their characters. So when participating in in-game events and ignoring the bad apples, you will feel to be part of the game and its community even more. And last but not least, the developer team that might be distracted with the development of Final Fantasy 16 at the moment, they're still the best developer team on the big stage right now and once they return with all their time, passion and glory, I firmly believe they will kick off the next era of joy and epicness for this amazing MMO. So if you haven't started, play this game for free as Heavensward and the base game are already included in the free trial, but just enjoy what the game has to offer as a whole. And for those feeling burnt out, do exactly as Yoshida claims, take some time off and play other games. It is just a matter of time for 14 to be kicked into the next stage of awesomeness. So we might just have to wait a bit more. Until then have a lot of fun with your personal journey in Final Fantasy XIV or in whatever game you enjoy at the moment. Stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving Final Fantasy. 